All right. I am pleased to welcome in the head coach of the San Diego Torero, Steve Lavin, in his second year at the helm there. Coach, how's it going? How's how's the first day or so in Vegas? And how's the team looking to this point? Well, for start, it's great to be with you. Um, you know, we're looking forward to uh, tomorrow's game uh, against the Pepperdine Waves. And we know uh, it'll be a challenging game. And... Uh, we are pleased, you know, with the incremental kind of measured progress we made from a season ago and uh, hope to be closer to full strength. We've been a little bit banged up and had an unprecedented amount of uh, injuries and illnesses this year. And uh, February, early March is always difficult for teams across the country because you're in the, the, the grind. But the championship week gives you that fresh start, uh, reset, a sense of a new beginning. Uh, everyone goes to zero and zero. Uh, there's some that have more favorable, you know, setups in terms of the seating and the brackets, but uh, the opportunity to dance uh, is there for everyone that's in championship week. So our guys are looking forward uh, to participating in the West Coast Conference Tournament. Yeah, and you're, and this is a team that really, I mean, from the external sense, really overachieved from where I think a lot of people thought this squad would be. You had 11 newcomers come onto this team, a lot of moving pieces. There was definitely going to be some growing pains early on, but we really started to see the veterans start to play well and really contribute well. And then some of the young guys also really start to step in and be, and really figure out the college game pretty quickly. Um, so just kind of talk about like the just the growth and overall kind of like development you've seen from this squad, because from the beginning of what we saw getting, even thinking about like that Arizona state game, which really was kind of like the, the eye opening win for everybody, not paying that close of attention uh, to where we are now, where it seems like this team has, has figured out a little bit more of my identity, even if there are, have been some uh, injury bugs here and there. Yeah. I mean, you hit the nail on the head there in terms of it's the youngest team in school history. Uh, so we knew there would be some challenges. I think nine or 10 freshmen is how we started the season. Uh, and it has been the veteran players, uh, Deuce Turner, uh, Wayne McKinney, really stabilizing forces. Uh, their backcourt play has been outstanding. And it's been helpful uh, to the younger players who are getting a school of hard knocks uh, education in Division One basketball. And uh, we've had terrific contribution. Uh, from our underclassmen, uh, but in college basketball, it's key to get, you know, good guard play, uh, consistent guard play. And so uh, Deuce Turner has been lights out in terms of his offensive fireworks and uh, the ability to get a bucket appropriately named Deuce uh, can score in a variety of ways and uh, really one of the more entertaining players to watch in the West Coast Conference. And Wayne McKinney's development from year to year, uh, even if you look at the numbers, uh, really impressive. You know, assists are up, his turnovers are down, he's shooting the ball better from long range. Uh, he's been able to salt victories away uh, from the free throw line for us. And uh, defensively, uh, he's a motor and uh, an engine for the Toreros. So our season, interestingly, you know, we started nine and four. Uh, you mentioned the Arizona State win, uh, which was a big one in terms of our players' confidence and self-belief. Uh, we went into the desert. Uh, and lost six of seven, uh, started West Coast Conference play 0 and 5. But part of that was just uh, the unique schedule. Uh, we had to play Gonzaga <laughs> twice early, uh, you know, University of San Francisco, uh, Santa Clara. Uh, so we played, you know, some of the top teams uh, in our conference early. And to our players' credit, uh, after that 0 and 5 start, uh, we won six of seven games, including four or five on the road to crawl back to six and six in league play and uh, finish seven and nine. Uh, so that's, you know, three games up from a year ago. We only won four games a season ago in conference. And uh, we had 11 wins on the year a season ago. Uh, now we have 17. So there's an increase of six more W's. So we're moving in the right direction. Uh, we know we have work ahead of us. Uh, but with a young group, a foundational class, uh, youngest in school history, we're building and uh, the sprinkling of veteran players, again, their leadership has been outstanding. Uh, Don Muncy, one of our co-captains, along with Wayne McKinney, and uh, Deuce, who just is a cool cucumber. Uh, 
He's uh, cool hand Luke on the court, very steady, uh, not in the peaks or valleys emotionally. Uh, doesn't say a lot, uh, but obviously his play on the court speaks for itself. Yeah, and, and did want to ask more about Deuce Turner because like him coming in as a transfer and then he kind of like being that instant impact for this team and being one of those older guys early on, like how, like once you were still in like in training camp and uh, getting warmed up for the season, how, how quickly did he kind of like start to develop into maybe one of those like leaders of that squad? Because obviously it's a little harder when you're coming in uh, fresh, but maybe it did help because there were a lot of new faces on the squad. Yeah, I think he grew in comfort uh, with, you know, our younger players. Uh, the newcomers naturally are galvanized because they're sharing in that common experience of making the transition from high school to college. And even P.J. Hayes, who was a Division II transfer, uh, was part of this incoming class. Um, so, you know, returning players and newcomers, always a challenge uh, in any era in terms of, blending the, and building the chemistry or the alchemy of a group. Um, but I'd say by, you know, early January uh, to mid-January, uh, it just seemed that the group really gelled. And oftentimes it is struggle. I think, you know, start 0-5 in conference, you know, you either go south and uh, it's really the beginning of the end for your season, or you can learn through that hardship and adversity and pull together and really focus on the elements uh, that you need to improve upon and doesn't guarantee you're going to win games, but you enhance the probabilities of being successful. And we were fortunate to, you know, improve some defensively. We became more efficient offensively. Uh, we cut down our turnovers, which is so important in terms of, you know, uh, having your transition defense, um, you know, in position to be able to get stops because those turnovers lead to runouts for opponents. And uh, that was the issue early. We were having 18, 19, 17 turnovers in those first five games and and uh, of late you know we're more around nine or ten no more than 11 turnovers and so uh, that's really helped our cause but uh, deuce has been a central integral part of our success this year and um, still has a year if he elects to come back which would be terrific and i think you know second team this year there's a chance he'd be in the mix for a player of the year candidate along with wayne mckinney if they were to come back they'd be you know, one of the outstanding premier backcourts in the West Coast and in our conference as well. Yeah, and think about just those two, because obviously Wayne McKinney returning, like he was one of the better younger players in this league um, the last couple of years um, going into this season. The one of, And one of the younger players that really kind of like jumped out to me early on and still jumps out to me was Kevin Patton uh, Jr. And he just seems like his athleticism and just his activity everywhere just seems to there's there's a little bit of a magnetism to to watching him play and just kind of talk about like what uh just his progression and what now like you're starting to see from him as he's developed over the year yeah to begin with one of the aspects that kevin clearly has and is on display when you watch him play is the grace uh, almost a dancer uh, and i found throughout my career 35 years associated with the sport whether it was coaching as an assistant or a head coach or a broadcaster is, you know, special players have an ease to their game. And that goes into other sports. You know, you think of Gretzky in hockey or Jerry Rice, you know, in football and uh, Muhammad Ali in boxing. Um, and that doesn't mean there isn't something to be said or a place for, you know, athletes that don't have that grace or ease, uh, but it really stands out. And with Kevin, whether it's the ball, you know, in his hand and, and his ability to maneuver and be shifty at his size and play over the top or throw precise passes to his teammates uh, or on defense, you know, his timing to be able to block shots yet not draw fouls on himself, uh, you know, says a lot about his basketball IQ. And, uh, you know, he is another player that's not in the peaks or valleys emotionally, a similar temperament uh, to Deuce Turner. And uh, Coach Wooden always spoke of the importance of, you know, burning your fuel, your emotional fuel evenly, um, and uh, didn't want his players or teams uh, to be in those peaks or valleys. And um, I think Kevin, his poise 
for a freshman uh, is exceptional. And uh, he can influence the game in a positive manner, uh, both offensively and defensively for us. And we've seen that with his steals, his rebounds, his ability to bring the ball down Main Street uh, and play make at his size, um, but can also step away and knock down threes. So there are areas he's going to, you know, have to continue to improve upon. He knows physicality uh, is an aspect that uh, he has room for growth in terms of absorbing contact from opponents and be able to finish through that contact. Uh, and defensively, you know, working on his lateral foot speed, uh, but he has great instincts. Uh, he's intelligent, uh, very creative, uh, almost an artist on the court. Uh, basketball's his canvas, and uh, he expresses himself creatively uh, through his style of play, which is singular and, and unique, and he's got a very bright future in basketball, not only at USD, but be beyond. Now, going into Las Vegas, obviously, like now we hit, hit the WCC tournament. Things do ramp up a little bit. You talked about it as a fresh start for everybody, and you guys did kind of came into the tournament struggling a little bit, like you lost three of four coming in, but you did win the last game on Sat this past Saturday uh, to kind of have a positive note going in. As you start to prep for the tournament and get these guys, a lot of new, a lot of younger players who are going to be experiencing their first college uh, basketball tournament. What's kind of the message as you kind of like prepare these guys going into also on a side of a bracket in which you have a bunch of teams that you've played well against and should actually play pretty well? Yeah, at this stage of the season, uh, there's that old phrase that coaches use, the haze in the barn. And so you're not going to dramatically, you know, be able to change your team. Um, you know, you want to continue to do the things that have, allowed you to have success to get to this point. Uh, there are adjustments in terms of fine tuning, uh, refining certain aspects uh, offensively and defensively, and, and maybe revisiting, you know, whether it's screening angles or uh, emphasizing, underscoring the importance of getting the ball into the paint, whether it's through our post feeds or through dribble penetration, uh, making that extra pass, you know, defensively, things as basic as high hands. Uh, defending without fouling, you know, playing with intensity, but also intelligence, showing some passion and energy, uh, but also being purposeful in our approach. And with a young team, you're emphasizing those types of elemental, uh, fundamental uh, keys to successful basketball. And you also want to stay in routine in terms of not having the departure from the rhythm because the regular season, the non-conference, uh, they're different stages of the year. And ultimately, your non-conference sets up conference play. And then conference play sets up postseason play. And so we're now stepping into that third stage of a season. And um, energy and effort, you know, the things that we have control over is what we really want to, you know, emphasize uh, with our team. And when we play with great energy and we play with effort. And um, when we trust one another in terms of sharing the basketball and making those extra passes, uh, good things have happened for us. And so those are the real kind of basics in my experience at different stops throughout my career. Uh, when you get to the postseason, yes, you have to be ready from timeout to timeout, from first half to second half and game to game in the postseason to make some subtle adjustments uh, in your defensive coverages, you know, how you're going to cover the post, how you're going to handle ball screens and the multiple or variety of ways you can choose to do that based on our personnel and opponent's personnel. Um, but the overall uh, message is, you know, we are who we are and let's be our best selves. And that will give us an opportunity to win as opposed to wholesale changes, which I think sometimes uh, younger coaches are more prone to do because it's uh, uncharted territory. Maybe it's their first time, uh, you know, in these waters uh, when it comes to the postseason. As you get, you know, more experience, uh, you realize it's, it's really the refinements and the subtle adjustments that often make a difference in advancing or going home. On the coaching front, when you're when you're prepping for any tournament situation, obviously you've been through these countless times over the years. Uh, what as as you're prepping for for potential long-term scenarios in the tournaments like how much are you paying 
able to even kind of look at look forward without having to obviously pay attention to the task at hand. How do you kind of balance that out when you're preparing for something like this? Well, I'm fortunate, you know, in the different stops I've had uh, to have great staffs. And so you delegate in terms of splitting up, you know, the potential opponents if you move down the line and survive and advance, as we say, in these conference tournament situations. And then the nice element of the West Coast Conference is we've played everyone with this balanced schedule twice. So there's familiarity um, with personnel of opponents and teams that we played recently. And so I think that helps our players as well. And um, But you're watching, you know, the most recent sample sizes and looking at those analytics and tendencies and areas where an opponent is excelling, but also areas uh, maybe where they're vulnerable and that we have the opportunity to exploit. And so then you amplify those elements that we think will put us in a competitive advantage and, and put our team uh, in an advantage in terms of having an opportunity to win. So uh, it's, it's that balance. You do want to stay focused on the task at hand, and that's the message with the players. Uh, right now, uh, the focus is on our upcoming opponent, uh, but our staff is also looking ahead some to that potential opponent on the other side of our first game in, in, in tournament play. All right. Well, Pepper, San Diego will be opening their WCC tournament against Pepperdine as they did beat Pacific on today on uh, Thursday. Uh, Coach, good luck in your game against uh, Pepperdine um, t tomorrow night on Friday. And hopefully I will be able to see you in person a little later on in the tournament when I arrive um, later this weekend. Look forward to it. Enjoy being on the podcast. We'll talk to you down the line. Take care.